Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and I learn how to be an overcomer. The Word of God builds you up and makes you able to lay hold of your inheritance in Him. It never tears you down. Even when it corrects you, it's showing you how to be better, <laughs> how to do better, how to overcome. Uh, things that come from the Lord never beat you down and leave you there. Never. That's the enemy. And so let's join faith again uh, today to hear words, words that save us from deception and confusion and from being robbed of things we should be enjoying in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you again. We ask for the utterance and for you speaking to the hearts and minds of every man, woman, every young person, uh, revealing yourself to us, your goodness, your graciousness, and the great victory that you have given us in our Master Jesus. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look with me, please, again in John 9, continuing in our study of this 14th individual account of healing, the healing of the man born blind. We've seen a lot of things already this week, but notice another emphasis. John 9, 1, Jesus passed by. He saw the man that was blind from his birth. His disciples asked him, said, Master, who did sin? This man, or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it's day, the night comes when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. So this passage begins in talking about sin. And he actually, it's actually mentioned repeatedly throughout the chapter. If you skip down to verse 16, some of the Pharisees, they said, uh, this man's not of God because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. And other people said, how can a man that's a sinner do such miracles? And down in verse uh, 24 and 5, then again, they asked the man that was blind, they said, give God the praise or glory. We know this man is a sinner. So the religious leaders, the Pharisees, they're calling Jesus a sinner. And um, that's when the man answered and said, well, whether he's a sinner or no, I don't know. One thing I know, I was blind and now I see. Down in verse 31, uh, he said, no, we know that God hears not sinners. So they're still talking about this. And in verse 34, uh, they answered him and said, you were all together born in sins. And do you teach us? And they excommunicated him. They kicked him out. They cast him out. So there's a, a repeated reference to sin. And then you see something at the end of this that gives a lot of revelation about sin. And, and, you know, when, just saying the word, a lot of times people don't like to hear it. They're like, you know, let's talk about something else. <laughs> but sin is what Jesus had to come take care of. Amen. Right? Uh, it's not something that's a nothing thing or to be brushed aside. Um, Jesus paid a big price to pay for our sins. And so we need to understand what sin is because it's a terrible thing. The wages of sin is death and not just physical death, spiritual death, 
eternal death. And so in verse 39, Jesus made this statement. He said, for judgment I'm come into this world that they which see not might see. So now here was a man who had never seen with his eyes, who now can see. This happened physically, literally, but now Jesus is talking about something else beyond that. He's talking about spiritual blindness and spiritual sight. And there are direct parallels between the natural and the spiritual. Everything that's in the natural came out of that dimension and realm and functions after the same laws as the things that you can't see. And so there is, just like there's natural physical seeing and hearing, there is spiritual seeing and hearing. It's just as real as the natural. Um, He said, for judgment I'm come into this world that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. Well, what does that mean? Some of the Pharisees that, you know, have been calling him sinner, they were listening to what he said, and they said, and this was sarcastically, are we blind also? Are you saying we're blind too? And Jesus said to them, and here you see this other thing that Jesus had talked about, out of your own mouth you'll be judged. He said, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. So sin has to do with what you see. Go with me to the book of James, James 4 and 17. The scripture said, therefore... To him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. Now why would you say to him? Isn't sin sin? Why would you say to him? The book of Romans goes into a lot of detail about this. In fact, let's just take a moment and look at it. Go back to to Romans, the third chapter. Romans chapter 3, the Bible talks about how that, you know, sin was in the world. I'm just going to paraphrase through some of this. Uh, Even before there was a law. But it says where there is no law, there's no transgression. If there's no commandment to break, then it's not held against you. And... uh, So it was, and Paul goes into some detail in this seventh chapter of uh, Romans. I'll just summarize some of it for time's sake. That um, he said, I was alive without the law at one point. But then when he learned about the law and he learned what was wrong, right and wrong, sin revived and I died. And just like we were talking about from from, uh, John 11 a couple of uh, classes ago, He said uh, sin was the occasion for, or excuse me, the law and breaking it was the occasion for sin and death. But the law was not bad. It's a good thing. But it was an occasion. And so it's when you see something and violate it, that's when sin uh, becomes sin to you. That's when you're held accountable for it. This answers the questions. uh, How can it be that this man, who's a grown man and adult, Jesus said it's not because of his sin that he's blind, and his parents. We know these two adults hadn't lived their whole adult life and never sinned, and yet Jesus said, no, it's not because of their sin that he was born blind. Why? They weren't violating any light that caused that to happen. Even if it was ignorance, uh, doors opened from previous generations. And it is sad that children are affected by the mistakes of their parents and grandparents and great-grandparents. This is a fact. 
I mean, if somebody is driving a car drunk and has a wreck and their child is hurt, well, it wasn't the child's fault, right? But they now are hurting because of the mistakes of their parent. And that's a simple thing, but that has happened. And then you've got today whole generations of somebody alive that their parents forsook God 800 years ago. Can you see that? And now it's not God that God is mad at them or God is trying to hurt them. And they're violating things that's causing all kind of problems in their life. But it's not per se them sinning against God. They don't even have the light to know what they're doing. But, but when you do get light and you do see some things, then you're responsible for it. And if you violate that light, then you've sinned. And that's when you want to come to the Lord, not run from him, come to him and confess it and acknowledge it and say, I did that. I messed up. Somebody said, well, yeah, but if Jesus has already paid for it, why do you need to do anything? He has already paid for it. That doesn't mean you've received it. Are y'all with me, class? If all it had to do is with him paying for it, then nobody would have to do anything and everybody would be saved. But that's not what the Bible teaches. You have to receive what he has so freely and graciously given. And no matter how badly you mess up, and even if you violate, you, you knew better. You knew that you knew better. Everybody around you knew that you knew better. <laughs> Still, you can be cleansed and washed. All you got to do is acknowledge it and receive. Oh, somebody say receive. Receive your forgiveness and your cleansing. And so, like he said, that not that this man sinned or that his parents sinned. And there have been many times that we have transgressed things and violated things and caused ourselves problems, but it, a lot of it was because of our ignorance. We didn't see it. We didn't know it. And um, don't then let the enemy beat you up and say, yeah, but because you've sinned, then you have to live with this. Because you have, you know, made so many mistakes then you have forfeited your right to ever have a good life or ever lies. I said, that's lies. This is why Jesus came. Come on, you remember our text that we saw? First John 3. He came to undo the works of the devil. And the devil has been able to do far too much because he's getting way too much cooperation out of people. But at the moment, you come to light and you come to realize I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be living like this. No wonder this has been causing me some problems. You can repent. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Father, for repentance. You can repent. And at that moment, whatever darkness had been working in your life loses its grip. The moment you repent, it loses its place. It loses its room to function or to operate. And that's why the scripture said in James, submit yourself to God. You do that first. Then resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Give God his place over you. Take your place under him. Then you're in a place to put the devil in his place <laughs> under your feet. Out of your life, commanding to stop, commanding to cease in his operations. I want us to act on that right now. Just close your eyes and focus on the Father. Uh, you, all of us have missed it and made mistakes. And you may have made some terrible mistakes and grievous mistakes. But the Lord does not want you to live in shame or guilt or condemnation. It's why Jesus came to undo all of that. So everybody said out loud, Father God, Father God I, acknowledge my I acknowledge my mistakes. I call wrong wrong. I call, wrong. I call sin sin. I call sin, and, sin. I and I thank you for paying the price, paying the price. For, all for all of that. And I receive, I receive forgiveness. forgiveness. I receive, I receive cleansing, and cleansing and washing. I receive, I receive 
the righteousness of God in Christ. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for washing me. Thank you for making me right in your sight, making me clean by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I just lift your hands and thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Come on, you're either forgiven or you're not. You're either clean or you're not. And he said, you are. Oh, somebody say, I'm clean. I'm clean. I'm clean. I'm clean. I'm free. I'm clean. All of us have made mistakes. And sometimes the same mistakes over and over again. And none of us would want to be put up here in a spotlight on you. And talk about every mistake that you've ever made. But like I said, all of us have. I've made mistakes. But I've repented. And I've received what he's done for me. So I refuse to be condemned over it. Can you hear what I'm saying? I refuse to be ashamed. I refuse to, to cower and pull away and be ashamed. Why? I'm either washed or I'm not. Right? I'm either clean or I'm not. And I believe the Bible. I believe he said your sins and iniquities I won't remember anymore. So why should I bring them up to him? Right? Come on, say it out loud. I am, I am clean. clean. I am, I am washed, washed by the blood of the Lamb. The of the Lamb. I, am I am forgiven, forgiven and, made righteous. and made righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 And that means the enemy has no rights to you. No access to you. No place in you. Thank God. Thank God. And the righteousness of Christ qualifies you for everything that Christ should have. Everything that belongs to him. We don't deserve it. Not even close. But we still get it. I said we still, we still get it. We don't deserve healing. But it's given to us. We don't deserve abundance, but it's given to us. We don't deserve protection, but it's ours. I said it's ours. It, it, for believers, it's experiential. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Look back at the, the, the concluding verses of that in John 9. He's, Jesus said, I, I am come into this world for judgment. And, and what kind of judgment? That they which see not, this is verse 39, John 9, 39, they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. Some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words. They said, are we blind also? He didn't re they didn't realize it, but that was coming out of their spirit. <laughs> Are we blind also? They should have been asking for help. Shouldn't they? <laughs> but they thought they were so smart. They had it all figured out. They had all their rules. And Jesus said, if you were blind, you should have no sin. Does this, uh, does this give you revelation concerning what sin is? We, what we read in James. To, to him that knows to do good, and does it not to him? It's sin. Why is it sin to him? Because of what he knew. Right? Or what he saw. To see, to know. He's talking about the same thing. You see it, you know it, you understand it. So, why would it just be sin to him? Because he knew it. If he didn't know it, then it wouldn't be sin to him until he knows it. And can you see this right here? If you were blind, what did Jesus say? You'd have no sin, which is why the man that was, you know, before he was born, certainly he didn't see <laughs> any of that. So it couldn't have been his sin. And his parents, they didn't know, right? They were blind, even though they could see physically, they were blind spiritually. 
And so they didn't know how that could have been prevented or what to do about it or how to fix it. They didn't have a clue. So no, it, even though they made plenty of mistakes, and since the man has been born and become an adult, he's made plenty of mistakes, and their forefathers made plenty of mistakes, it, that was not being held against them as sin. And so Jesus says, because uh, no, neither one, neither one uh, had sinned, was the cause of him being born blind. But while I'm here, I'm the light of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is he in us? Yes. Did he, didn't he say now we're supposed to be the light of the world? Yes. Didn't he say that? Yes. Why? Because he's in us. His light is in us. He said, I'm the light of the world. And as long as I'm here, uh, we got to do the works of light. And the works of God need to be manifested. And so no matter how it got that way or why it got that way or how long it's been that way, God wants it fixed. Amen. Does he or not? Yes. Yes. Says, yeah, but, yeah, but. Yeah, but, yeah, but the wrong doctrine, and yeah, but, you know, really sinning, and yeah, but really messing up. Well, you don't know if they sinned or not, because you don't know what they knew right. or what they saw. And besides the point, the Lord wants it fixed. Right. He wants it fixed. I don't care if them and their folks were the meanest, worst outlaws in the country since the 1700s. God wants it fixed. Yeah. He wants their babies healed. He wants their bills paid. Does he or not? He wants them free. Why? Because for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy and undo the works of the devil. And now he has called you into his helps ministry. Is that right? Right? Jesus and sons and daughters. He, he wants you going about doing good, healing and ministering to those that are oppressed of the devil because he's anointed you with the same spirit that was on him when he walked the earth. And every time that you see a bad situation, don't get into this theological barbed wire of who sinned and what's wrong and is their doctrine right or is it wrong? Or, you should look at it and go, needs to be fixed. Yes. Huh? <laughs> needs to be fixed. How do we get this fixed, Lord? You start looking to him because and, and, you know whatever the enemy has done that's evil and wrong and destructive and robbing and killing, the Lord wants it undone. 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 Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say, oh, Lord, use us to undo the works of the evil one. We present ourselves. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lay your hands on your body. Let's act on this right now. You start, start at home. Start right here with our own body. Say it out loud. Every evil work. Every evil work. In, in, against, my life, against my life, against my body, against my body working against my body, against my I, body. Command you to stop. I command you to stop, cease, cease. And, stop. And, stop. and stop, and leave my body, leave my life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Put your hands on your head. And said out loud, every oppressive thing, every, oppressive every thing, depressing thing, every, depressing every thing, confusing thing every confusing that's, of the enemy, that's of the enemy, I resist you, I, resist you, I command you, I command you stop, stop and leave me, leave, me, leave, my, life, leave my life in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Now lift up your hands and say, I receive, I receive the, oil the, the oil of the Spirit, the healing balm, the healing balm of, the of the Holy Spirit. 
I receive the peace of God. I receive the joy of the Lord to recover me, restore me, make me whole and sound and strong in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Father. Just thank him for another few moments. Just lift up your hands. The good things are happening all over the place. Good things are happening all over the place in many, many places. As you continue to thank him, it continues to work. Oh, somebody say, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am delivered. I am loosed. I am healed. I am free. In Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm glad I came to class today. Hallelujah. Well, that's it. Our time is up again. But there's a lot more to see. We're just on number 14 here. There are others to see. Come back with us again soon here in Faith School. I've enjoyed being with you again this week here in Faith School. Uh, many of you I know are partners with us and we so appreciate it. That gives us a right to believe with you on your finances. If you're not a partner, you want to be, there's information on the screen. But this verse that we saw in 1 John 3, 8, that Jesus was manifested to destroy the works or to undo the works of the devil. Even if you've made a mess of your finances, the Lord can help you undo. He will help undo what you messed up. Pray this prayer with me. Father God, forgive me for not listening and making mistakes and causing problems. I ask you, Work in my finances. Work in the material realm of my life so that these problems are undone. They are unraveled and help fix my finances. I claim extra coming in in Jesus' name. Praise God. The anointing manifests to break the yokes, to remove the burdens, to undo even the things that you and I messed up ourselves. Isn't God good? He is so kind. We're believing with you. You're coming up. You're not staying where you are. You're not going down. You're coming up. You're coming out. You're going over big. In Jesus' name, to His glory. We'll see you again soon, back here at Faith School. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today. But you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.